For those who want to recreate the daring, behind-the-lines missions of U.S. Special Forces, Modern Expansion No. 22 offers you the chance to play U.S. Airborne Soldiers. The expansion allows you to play missions and achieve objectives in the quick-strike manner associated with U.S. Special Forces in the Middle East. What you get with this expansion includes the following. Eight player soldiers, seven non-player soldiers, and seven squad soldiers. Two weapon, six equipment, and four skill cards. Five landing and nine enemy line cards. Five mission and two objective cards. The eight player soldiers offers a point range from 15 to 27. Some are equipped with normal skills while others have specialized skills that are part of the expansion. The non-player soldiers cost less, ranging from 7 to 15 points, and also come in a variety of options in terms of skills, equipment, and up to three actions in some cases. The squad soldiers round out the special forces, and they are the least expensive, costing from 6 to 12 resource points. The expansion provides two weapons, the M16A2 rifle and M4A1 carbine. Both weapons have a resource point cost of 3, but the carbine does have a loadout of 2. The rifle can be fired in either semi or burst mode, while the carbine offers either semi or automatic mode. Both weapons are standard with U.S. Special Forces. The equipment starts with a parachute, which may be used by any airborne soldier. It does limit the amount of gear that can be carried, and the only explosives allowed are up to three grenades. This is where the weapons bag comes in handy, allowing you to carry more gear and equipment. The ACOG sight boosts your weapon's attack roll, save for the grenade launcher, while the scope helps to extend your ability to strike a target at range 2. The holographic sight also boosts your weapon's attack roll and ability to defeat cover assuming it is the only sight, and it does not work with a grenade launcher. The supply drop is one of the more interesting pieces of equipment. It provides six resource points worth of gear in a location other than the mission card. However, the chance that you have to roll again can raise the tension level when you need that extra gear. The four skill cards that come with the expansion create even greater immersion. Awareness lets you ignore the effects of enemy line cards, assuming that you spend the required experience points. If you are a good packer, you can put explosives onto your soldier and not have to hope for a supply drop. A smart landing allows you not to draw a landing zone card or to add three to the movement of every soldier on turn one. Your choice. Being unlucky at least has the benefit of costing two negative resource points, but for that advantage, each time you draw an enemy line card, you have to roll a die. A three or above is no effect, but a two or less means you have to draw another enemy line card. As part of the airborne missions, you must include landing zone and enemy line cards. You start by shuffling both types of cards separately and placing them face down. Unless otherwise noted, on the first turn you must draw a landing zone card and apply whatever effect it has on your mission. After the first turn, landing zone cards are no longer drawn. Enemy line cards are drawn at the beginning of the second turn and every subsequent turn afterwards. The five mission and two objectives let you experience the different conditions and situations that define combat in the Middle East. The Windy Drop is a good starting mission, but beware of the conditions as the first turn will require every soldier to discard two loadout of gear and suffer either a suppress or a wound. The Desolate Area is a more traditional mission and the wide open terrain lets you recon a location on the first turn. The hostiles will be at the landing site to greet you during the Taking Fire mission. There will be three hostile cards awaiting you on the first turn. The concealed entry reduces your loadout, but the value of the hostiles are decreased by three on the location site number two. An easy landing is indeed that. No landing zone card is drawn, but you will have your loadout reduced by five. The objectives start with a long range snipe, a value three hostile screens, a random value three hostile but you will only have a single turn on the site and must attack from range two. Or you can capture the VIP, simply inflict a single hand-to-hand -hand combat hit against a hostile with two, but remember that the other hostiles will provide a screen. The modern US airborne expansion of Warfighter offers plenty of challenges as you fight against a determined foe.